Oh, you're already clapping. Put them away for now. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here with you. And we will be playing music later on. But before we begin, I would like you to close your eyes. Sit back and imagine that you are in a jungle, in a real jungle. And if you've ever been in a real jungle, you know that she wants to eat you. And you have been lost in this jungle for three days. You have strayed from your people. You have strayed from your pack. And you feel despair creep in because you are hungry, tired, you are alone. But at the sunset of the third day, you muster your courage. You have been silent this whole time because you know those animals out there will eat you up and there might be even aggressive people out there. But at this moment, you have nothing to lose. So as the sun sets, you let out into the wild a very human sound. You go, ew. Ew. Somewhere in the distance, you hear a reply. And even though you know your people are far, far, far away, in a certain funky way, they're present. And you return to your home through echoes, voices in the jungle drawing you in, leading you home. Hold on to that emotion for a little bit. Beautiful feeling. Beautiful. I make a living by mixing my passion for music and social phenomenon. And lately, I've become obsessed with the act of holding co-creative space and the effect it has on human beings, on individuals, and on groups as well. Now, if you understand what it is, it's people weaving social bonds through something co-created. It's people holding and concentrating attention together. It's people elevating consciousness as a group. And when you do it right, it is a transformational affair. It can build communities, it can bolster social capital, and not long ago, I found out that it has been used for a very long time as a means of social engineering. Now, you may have heard of things such as Burning Man, right? Raise your hand if you know Burning Man. Right, 70,000 people commune in the Nevada desert under 10 principles. Some people come to party like there's no tomorrow. But most people who go there conscientiously, they understand that they came to, to feel the pleasure of unbridled collective creativity and to maybe dream up better scenarios for tomorrow. I personally am a very big fan of the Rainbow Gathering. Month-long hippie powwows where people commune in pristine nature without formal organization, without written rules, without decent accounting, without even a legal entity. Ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you that I regained my faith in humanity by going to the Rainbow Gathering and seeing how people just come together and they can form cohesive, coherent, and robust social units which are beautiful, beautifully humane, and all through a framework of love. It sounds like hardcore hippie nonsense, no? Yeah, but you know what? It works. Now, each of these special spaces has its own culture, a collection of beliefs and behaviors that the community adheres to. And if you go to one of these spaces, if you go to one of these spaces, chances are that it will recalibrate and reset your social cultural settings. And it's all because these systems are open. Because culture, ladies and gentlemen, is fluid and contagious. When you're in the pack, when you're in the pack, behaviors and beliefs, they flow, they flow freely. Some people say that it's like contagion. Some people say that it's kind of like a, a process of social osmosis. I would personally like to say that it is like resonance. 
Okay, it works like resonance. And let me give you a very good example of how this works. Say I was to emit right now an ale, but I'm gonna charge that ale with a very special energy. I'm gonna make it fantastic, fabulous, extroverted. It will sound like this, ale. <laughs> and if I get an ale with that same energy, I know something has clicked amongst us. I know I have been understood. You have validated me, you have reinforced me, and you have amplified me. That is the power of resonance. It is like a, a protocol handshake, where all of a sudden I know that my belief system is at home here amongst you beautiful people. And that's deep. It means I can come out. I can be myself. But when you go to these spaces, you can also pick things up. Because when you're in the pack, ladies and gentlemen, yourself, it begins to fade. And ethics and morality, they start to blend in very strange ways. So I tell everybody, if you really want to become a better person, it really helps to be around good people and to expose yourself to good culture. So one of the main takeaways I have for today, and you can write it down or take a picture, is the following. Yes, this is a formula. Better, better spaces create better people, create better spaces, create better people, so forth, so forth, blah, 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 okay? If you become exposed to a culture that resonates with you deeply, it will not only change you, it will turn you into an incarnation of that culture. You will become a manifestation of the rituals, of the beliefs, of the behaviors, even the aesthetics. So let me give you an example of why it is important for us to create better culture together. I'd like you now to solemnly tell yourselves, say to yourselves right now, I am a good person. I am a good person. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is third rate therapy. That's third rate th therapy. Now turn to a neighbor. Look, look, just look at someone. Yeah, look at someone. Yeah, again, right? And tell them, you are a good person. <laughs> Everybody's ah, it's like, the Swedes got uncomfortable, no? Ah. <laughs> I know you. It's more powerful, right? Yes? Yes? yes. 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 Okay, that's because that's second-rate therapy. But if you want first-rate therapy, what you do is you turn those behaviors and those beliefs into a reality you can observe. You create a space where you observe yourself and others doing what good people do amongst good people. And then you will believe it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is first-rate therapy. It's when you take a culture, and if you want to make it robust, really robust, you have to create cognitive coherence through intention, expression, execution. Us burners, we call this truth as an act. Truth as an act, something I do. I'm not a burner because I survived Burning Man. I'm a burner because I've been amongst them and I know as they do. I need only see the way that they raise an eyebrow. I'm like, I got you, brother. I'm a rainbow, not because I've been to rainbow eight times, but because when I leave the rainbow gathering, I still apply the code of conduct. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something about this. This stuff does not wash off that easily. It remains with you. I'd like you to know why these spaces all of a sudden have become so popular. Why this hardcore hippie esoteric bullshit is hot shit at the moment. And it is because we have a need, a need for humane collectivization. Now it used to be so, it used to be so, that the people who had a monopoly on the need for humane collectivization were organized religions. They were the institutions that could engineer these spaces, these solemn spaces of elevation and inspiration through art, through song, through scripture, through ritual. But something has happened. Something has happened. Religions have lost their firm grip. And somewhere along the way, we managed to kill God to make room for man. And then we took man and we enslaved him in a merciless industrial machine where he has been reduced to a cog. 
all these beautiful, all these beautiful principles of the Renaissance, fraternity, equality, freedom, have either, either been felled by your own cynicism, commodified, or beautifully systemized. And all of a sudden, we have found ourselves in a place where nothing is sacred. Nothing is sacred. Not people, not truth, not nature, not even God. And in a sense, we have returned to the jungle. Pitted against each other in merciless schemes of maybe zero-sum thinking. Perhaps it's a paradigm of, of personal success overall. But somewhere deep inside, we crave for humanity, for real humanity, for warmth, for understanding. And so some crazy hippies like myself and others go, Ew. Ew. Right. And some people can't help to resonate and go, hey, I got this in me as well. Right. Dystopia has been defined by a friend of mine as the thing that occurs when technology grows much faster than our human evolution. It, it looks something like this. This is an exponential curve of technology, and this is human evolution, right? And this is where we are right now. We talk about dystopia all the time, right? And we will continue. The C would be our cleverness. Cleverness. W would be our collective wisdom, okay? And we will continue to see these scenarios, these dystopian scenarios, which will usually have something to do with too much power being in the hands of the morally foolish. We don't speak about utopia enough, though. And utopia is understood as a fictional ideal to describe the good society. But ladies and gentlemen, I would like to challenge that notion, and I would like to say that utopia is space held by individuals who are living their ideals to the highest standards. To take that fictional kind of construct and say, no, this can be something we can co-create. It can be something we can play. It can be something we can model. It can be something we can simulate. To take that fictional ideal and turn it into a process of co-creation. That, ladies and gentlemen, is my idea worth spreading. Okay? We can't take everybody to Rainbow Gathering or to Burning Man. It is physically impossible. We cannot cure these people's needs for humane collectivization that way. Or we can't do that hard neuro-linguistic reset that we need to get those people up on par with our collective consciousness. But culture, on the other hand, scales beautifully. And if we start destigmatizing dreamers who actually want to create utopia, if we start creating these spaces more, we actually have a chance of scaling this culture exponentially. Because radical culture has that beautiful ability. Now, if Yuval Harari is correct, what makes us homo sapiens is our ability to create collective fictions. So I dare say that the quality of our collective realities should have a lot to do with our ability to create collective fictions. Not only dream them up, but play them out. And because talk is cheap, and I would ra much rather create a beautiful space laden with these beautiful values with you, I would like to ask you all to stand up. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get some participation going here. Now, six minutes is not enough to co-create a space, but it is enough to have a quickie. So if you're all into this and you're ready to have a quickie, we will, we will circumvent foreplay and we're gonna have some fun together. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I need you to do. I need you to raise your hands in the air. I need you to raise your hands in the air. And I need you to wash off all this TEDx conference protocol. Oh, I need you to go. Beautiful. Now, I need to hear your voices. Yeah. You can make some noise. You can make some noise. You can clap your hands. Yeah. I would like you to notice one thing. I would like you to notice how the norms in this space changes with simple validation. You see a person do something and you can follow their example all of a sudden and it grows exponentially. All right. Do you have it? Make music together. Yeah, make music together. Yeah. I know you need togetherness. 
so I want you on stage. I need some people on stage as soon as possible. I need people on stage. Come on, get on stage. Come closer. Come, 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 come. Everybody, everybody on stage. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. All right, come on, don't be afraid. I need you closer because we need to manifest togetherness. This is no good. Making, we're making a circle. Come here. A circle right here. A circle right now. We're making a circle right here. A circle right now. A circle right here. A circle right now. A circle right here. A circle right now. I need togetherness. I need you to come closer. 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 This is safe. All right. Good. Good. One thing we need is connection. And to make connection, to have more connected people, you need to be able to make eye contact with human beings. So look around. Look around. Look around at these brothers and sisters. You also. You're involved. What are you doing? Look around. And I need you to go. Yes, yes, yes. It's open protocol. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Again. Yes, yes, yes. Mean it. You need to say no, no, no as well Because this is a culture of consent So let's practice the no, no, no So people get out of your face No, no, no No, no, no It turns to yes, yes, yes Beautiful, yes, yes, yes Alright, I believe that human capital is a resource But you need to let it out so now you're clapping in a way that's not wealthy. You're clapping in a boring, very monolithic kind of like way. But let's, let's, come on. Let's move it around. Shh. Yeah. All right. I need some voices. I need some voices. Come closer. Everybody come closer, closer. Everybody come closer, closer. Can you hold the system without me? Can you give me an oh? Come closer. Can you give me an oh? I believe that every good system has a very good deal of autonomy. So I'm gonna let this go and I will let you sing whatever you want. I'm gonna let it go. And it is your participation which establishes ownership. Are you ready? <laughs> You're cooking with emotion. You're cooking with emotion. All right. Stay, stay with me, stay with me, stay, 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 stay. Okay, this was a quickie, this was a quickie. A sloppy, sloppy quickie. Sloppy quickie. As we say in Colombia, un derroche de pasión, así, which is usually messy and has consequences. But what we can do to make this healthy is we can say thank you and say gratitude and show gratitude. Thank you. Because one of the main principles here is decommodification. We're not doing this for money. We're doing it for a personal enjoyment and we did our best. So I want to say thank you to you. Thank you. Thank you. Say it. You, you were part of this as well. Thank you. Be grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Thank you. Show gratitude. And right now, as is customary, after a beautiful, intimate interaction, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have myself a cigarette. Bye-bye. <laughs>